On May 22, 2022, a heinous crime occurred in a shared entrance of an office tell located in Pujandong, Seomyeon, Busan Jingu, Busan Metropolitan City. A man in his early 30s, identified as Yeonu, brutally assaulted a woman in her 20s. Referred to as the Busan Roundhouse Kick Incident, this shocking event sparked widespread outrage across South Korea. Once the perpetrator's identity came to light, attention quickly turned to his actions during the seven minutes when he carried the victim, deliberately avoiding areas monitored by CCTV cameras. This particular aspect has become a highly contentious issue, raising significant concerns. With that, let us delve into today's case. The CCTV footage, the sole witness to the incident, captures the following scene. In the early morning of May 22, 2022, around 5 a.m., at the shared entrance of Eland Pier Seomyeon Office Tell in Seomyeon, Busan Metropolitan City, a 26-year-old female victim was returning home after watching a street performance with her friend. She pressed the elevator button on the first floor, unaware that for approximately seven minutes and a distance of about 150 meters, Ionu had been trailing her. Approaching from behind as she slowly made her way towards the elevator, he suddenly kicked her in the back of the head, causing her to fall to the ground. The victim's head struck the building wall as she fell, and she instinctively shielded herself by covering her head with her hands and curling up her legs. Yonu forcefully took her cell phone and proceeded to kick her head four more times, rendering her unconscious and lying stiff on the ground, before delivering one final blow to her head. While dragging the victim by the neck, he heard the sound of the descending elevator and placed her over his shoulder, heading towards a blind spot in the first floor corridor where the CCTV coverage was absent. In the process, he even took the victim's shoes and bag, displaying meticulousness in his actions. Approximately seven minutes later, he fled the scene. Yonu was eventually apprehended on May 25th at a motel in Busan, Sasanggu, three days after the incident, where he had been hiding at his girlfriend's place. According to the testimonies of a resident and the victim's sister, who were the first to discover the victim, she was found with her upper garments lifted, belt undone, and the buttons and zippers of her pants open, exposing pubic hair. Her underwear was found draped over her right leg inside her pants, indicating that something more than physical assault took place during that seven minutes. At the time of his arrest, evidence on Hyunwoo's mobile phone revealed searches for Seomyeon murder, Seomyeon attempted murder, along with words indicating that he was attempting to make sexual advances on the victim. However, the victim suffered severe injuries, including a traumatic brain hemorrhage that required over 16 weeks of treatment, open scalp wounds, brain damage, and a potentially permanent paralysis of the right ankle. Additionally, she experienced dissociative amnesia, with memories of the incidents lost until her hospitalization for two to three days, making her physical recovery the utmost priority. During the investigation while being questioned by investigators, Iano sarcastically questioned if sexual intercourse could have been possible during the seven minutes when he was in the CCTV blind spot. He denied sexually violating the victim, admitting only to the assault. Furthermore, he claimed that the assault was impulsive, prompted by the victim giving him a disdainful look and verbally abusing him when they crossed paths on the street. He even asserted that he couldn't discern the victim's gender. As a result, in the first trial on October 28, 2022, the Busan District Court sentenced Lee Yun Hoo to 12 years in prison for attempted murder, with an additional requirement of wearing a location tracking device for 20 years after his sentence ends. His girlfriend also received a sentence of eight months in prison with a two-year probation for the charge of concealing a criminal. However, on November 5th, 2022, the victim shared a detailed post on an online community titled, After 12 Years, I Might Be Killed, 
expressing her fear and sense of injustice regarding the verdict. Given that Ionu, at the age of 31, is relatively young, the victim's plea that his sentence of imprisonment is far from sufficient compared to capital punishment or life imprisonment stemmed from her fear of his manipulative nature. He even resorted to threats against his girlfriend, who tried to break up with him while he was in custody, claiming to know her resident registration number and vowing to find and kill her. While the victim lost 10 kilograms during that time, Yonu is said to have gained weight each time he appeared in court. During his time in prison, he openly expressed his intent for revenge. Yonu displayed no remorse for his actions. Ionu treated his crimes as a kind of game and even played with investigators during police interrogations. While he admitted to the assault, he used wordplay to deny the sexual assault charges, asserting that he kicked her to wake her up. Ionu appealed the severity of the punishment and maintained his denial of attempted murder. Sexual assault charges were not pursued at the time. The victim's critical condition, which required immediate life-saving measures, prevented the collection of DNA evidence from her body, despite her clothes being removed. Considering the possibility of a different outcome with evidence related to sexual assault, the prosecution appealed on the grounds of unfair sentencing and requested additional DNA analysis. In particular, the victim's defense attorney emphasized the need for a more thorough examination of the DNA from the victim's pants, as the first trial indicated contamination of the clothing. Additionally, given that Ionu had searched for keywords related to sexual assault punishment during his escape, they requested a closer examination of the events that transpired during the seven minutes. Contrary to this, Yono shamelessly claimed that he deserved only a three-year sentence and appealed on the grounds of injustice. Normally, a three-year sentence for causing injury resulting in death is possible if there is no prior criminal record, genuine remorse, and an agreement with the victim. As a result, attention shifted to Ihonu, the audacious criminal who claimed to be a victim of injustice despite his extensive criminal history. Ionu had a record of 18 offenses, including extortion, assault, and violence. Since he was a minor, over 10 years ago, he had committed dozens of crimes and even became the leader of a youth gang. In 2007, at the age of 15, Ionu faced a criminal trial for special theft and was transferred to the juvenile division of the family court instead of receiving criminal punishment. From 2009 onwards, he embarked on a life of full-fledged criminal activities. He committed acts of robbery and assault while under the influence of alcohol, repeatedly delivering multiple kicks to the victim's faces, resulting in severe injuries. He was convicted on charges of aggravated robbery. In 2013, at the age of 21, Ionu faced his third criminal trial, which gained media coverage through SPS's unanswered questions. The charges against him at the time included special theft, group assault, and aggravated assault, all falling under the Violent Crimes Act. In February 2013, he impersonated as the older brother of a minor escort to extort money from her client. He took 1.3 million won in cash and a check card from the victim. Ionu enticed the victim to a motel where he launched a surprise attack, causing severe injuries by striking the victim's nose. He was also charged with forgery, solicitation of adult services, and other offenses. In another incident, he repeatedly struck a victim's face following a minor shoulder bump at a bar in Busan, resulting in injuries. Ionu served a six-year prison sentence for this crime and was released in 2020. However, he faced another trial for charges of illegal intrusion into a shared residence. He entered the victim's house and allegedly withdrew 2.7 million won from the victim's check card, resulting in a two-year prison sentence. After his release, Ionu allegedly broke into another victim's house using the password in the early morning of March 12, 2022, resulting in a 1 million won fine. And on May 22nd, 
he committed the infamous Pusan Roundhouse Kick incident. Criminal psychology analyst Pyo chang -won regarded this incident as a premeditated stalking attempted murder case with the intent of sexual assault. During the police investigation, Yeonu vehemently denied the allegations of sexual assault, claiming to have a girlfriend. A former schoolmate of Yeonu came forward a week before the second trial, revealing that he had a criminal history similar to the current case using the same methods. The schoolmate stated that Yeonu would target women passing by in a playground using blind spots and CCTV cameras and kicking their legs from behind, causing them to fall. The witness testified that the current kicking incident was different only in terms of the targeted body part, while the method remained the same. A Korean investigative YouTuber disclosed personal information about Yeonu that couldn't be revealed on broadcast TV stating that Lee had a strong desire for women from a very young age and had used drugs and alcohol during sexual encounters. Yono previously worked as a security guard at a club in Busan Somyeon, where he engaged in various deceptive acts such as asking intoxicated female customers for their contact information or taking them home. He was fired from the job after a short period, less than two months. Based on his statement about enjoying sexual relationships without spending money, it is possible that he committed undisclosed crimes. Additionally, Yeonu's former girlfriend testified that he enjoyed non-consensual sexual acts and often demanded coercive sexual activities. Another schoolmate expressed confidence that Yeonu's crime was indeed a sexual crime committed through anal intercourse. This provided a clue to distinguish his actions from common sexual crimes. A former co-worker mentioned that Yeonu once shared a tip for avoiding detection in sexual assault allegations, suggesting that DNA testing on anally committed crimes would be difficult and sometimes wouldn't be detected. The victim's statement on an online community where she mentioned bleeding from the anus aligned with evidence suggesting Yeonu's obsession with the anus. The victim believed that the crime committed against her was premeditated, supported by consistent testimonies from Ionu's acquaintances, who heard him express attraction toward her. On the day of the incident, Ionu declared his intention to assault her and chased after her, according to his friend's testimony. They also told police that Lee said, I did it, I just did her, afterwards. The victim attended the first trial and presented over 1,600 pages of evidence obtained through a civil lawsuit shedding light on the details of the crime and establishing its nature. CCTV footage and forensic evidence from mobile phones were also examined. The opinion of the victim's anal surgeon indicated that cases of general anal tearing exhibit a consistent pattern, whereas sexual assault cases show multiple directions. Additionally, the victim proved in court on May 17th that her genes, designed with an exceptionally long rise, could not be removed or slipped down by themselves. During the trial verification, Yeonu, who previously claimed to have no recollection, remained silent with closed eyes. However, during the second appeal trial on May 19th, additional DNA testing and witness adoption were allowed. Through DNA retesting of the victim's clothing, the seven-minute whereabouts outside the CCTV were revealed. Yeonu's DNA was detected in five locations, including three inside the pants and one on the outside, leading to new charges brought by the prosecution on May 23rd. On May 31st, 2023, the court sentenced Yeonu to 35 years in prison after accepting the prosecution's request for a change in indictment. The appellate court upheld the guilty verdict and sentenced him to 20 years in prison. Furthermore, his personal information will be publicly disclosed for 10 years on the Information Network. He will face a 10-year employment restriction in child-related institutions, and a tracking device will be attached for 20 years to ensure public safety and prevent harm to the victim. 
However, the victim expressed her concerns about open threats of retaliation and her own protection. An inmate who had been imprisoned with Ionu testified on SPS's unanswered questions, saying Ionu believed he had been unjustly imprisoned and planned to escape and kill the victim. She questioned why she had to face such difficult circumstances, despite being innocent. Iono will still be relatively young, in his 50s, even after serving a 20-year prison sentence. Iono showed no remorse or offered an apology for his actions. It is disheartening that such a heinous crime resulted in only a 20-year sentence instead of life imprisonment. It was revealed that Ionu accessed the victim's personal information through the civil lawsuit records, taking advantage of the current Civil Procedure Act. This raises concerns that victims may be deterred from pursuing civil lawsuits for damages due to the fear of further harm. There is an urgent need to establish a legal system that addresses and deals with threatening criminals, protecting victims so they can stand up for themselves without fear. That concludes today's case. Thanks for watching.